there's a 95% chance that the way you're storing your Pokemon cards right now is actually destroying them. Hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars worth of collectibles are just sitting there like a bag of open chips in your pantry about to go stale. Yuck. Don't be like this guy, this guy, or this guy who's made the mistakes I'm about to show you so you don't practice bad storage behavior. To start, let me ask you a question. Would you ever store your cards in your armpit? Yeah. Of course you wouldn't. Like, please don't do that. That's super weird. But that's kind of what you're doing when you put your cards in a box and stick them in a place like the attic or a non-temperature controlled storage unit or Florida. Exposing your cards to hot and moist is bad storage behavior. Florida was a joke, but actually not really because I bought an incubator, set the temperature and humidity to what it would be like to live in Florida, and after two days, holographic cards that were not in sleeves began to warp and curl. Sorry, Florida and other places like you. Store your cards where temperatures are more regulated, airflow is good, and if you really wanted to go all out, add in a little moisture absorption packet, like one of these silica gel ones that you normally throw away. And remember kids, do not eat. Next, Pokemon cards are like vampires. Not only do they suck the life out of well, your bank account, but they don't do well in the sun either. I tested this and within just a couple days, my Pokemon cards, including graded cards, began to fade in the sun. Yikes. Putting your cards in the path of direct sunlight is bad storage behavior. I'm looking at you, swap meet sellers who keep your cards out in the sun all day. I see you. And I'm also looking at you, the viewer, who likes to display your cards on your desk or bookshelf or somewhere else in your house. And these are usually your better items too. And that window you're next to, you might not know when you're out at school or work or something, a beam of light just may come across that window and bam, the sleeves and the top loaders and the card savers, they don't save your cards from harmful UV rays. UV rays, more like you be rays in a glass because you're saying farewell to your favorite cards. I'm so sorry, that was really bad. <laughs> UV protection cases could work, but they could get expensive. Just look out for the sun, okay? Speaking of looking out, if you collect sealed packs, well, I got your back. Because if you store them like this, that's bad storage behavior. You know how like in the ocean, the deeper you go, the more pressure you feel? Well, if you stack your packs on top of each other, the packs on the bottom feel the pressure. And then what happens? Big crimp and spend and cheese. Check them out now. You see those right there? Those are crimples or crimp dimples. You gotta protect your expensive packs like this. Get a card saver. Stick your pack on top of it, put both inside of a grated slab sleeve, and you're good to go. But Pat, now I can't stack them together. They slip, bro. I got you. Grab an empty elite trainer box and you can stack your packs like this. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, and the same goes with your booster boxes. If you stack them like this, that's bad storage behavior. Whether for display or in a box for storage, these things are kind of heavy and the cardboard that makes up a booster box is weaker than my dating game in high school. Use display cases if you're gonna show them off and stack your boxes. And if you're storing them, ideally you just want one level high. And that's probably why when Pokemon packs booster boxes and cases, they're just one level high. One level. Now, speaking of weight. Wait, what about your elite trainer boxes? Well, the cardboard is much stronger, so stacking a few of them on top of each other is fine. But the bigger worry here is the plastic wrap. It's thinner than the ice that I'm on with my wife for buying way too many Pokemon cards. Here's how you can avoid bad storage behavior with your ETBs. First, no sun. The sun eats thin plastic for breakfast and it'll literally disintegrate over time. Second, you could stack these without protection just fine, but any shifting or movement could scratch the plastic and tear it off. So I'd recommend using a container to store each one individually. There are these expensive ones that look real nice, but our good friend Pokediz did a video once showing off these awesome food storage containers from the brand Bright Room, which you can find at Target that perfectly fit your ETB. Let's talk about your thick plastic. I'm talking about your graded and authenticated cards, like from PSA, CGC, BGS, and all the other random companies. One of the most common things I see is people stacking their graded cards on top of each other like this. This is bad storage behavior. Not because of the weight, these things aren't that heavy. And yeah, I know they're literally built for stacking like Lego. But the problem is the edges of the plastic are prone to chipping. And of course, like most hard plastics, it could easily scratch too. If you stack these things and you move around, especially if you're traveling, you're likely to see a scratch that makes it almost look like it's on the card. Protect your graded cards with graded card sleeves and then use a box like this one to store them together. Plus, when you're traveling or trading these items, they're already protected and you have one less thing to worry about. For your super expensive thick plastic like these, I'm joking, I meant like these. You might consider investing in a specialized case that's built specifically to hold these kinds of slabs that offer additional padding and keep these things from moving around. And is that a real first edition Shadowless Charizard from 1999, the most sought after collectible in all of Pokemon and for many of the world? 
No, it's fake. Storage isn't just about where or how you store your cards for long-term protection. It's about staying organized so you can quickly find what you're looking for. If you're not labeling your stuff in storage so you can easily find it later, you're practicing bad storage behavior. Here's a couple things I like to do. Removable labels. Write something down, add one on. If you need to change it up, easy to remove. Done. Shifting gears, we've talked a lot about sun damage, but very little about water damage, except when we talked about armpits and Florida. Water damage is one of the leading causes of catastrophic death to collections. It happens a lot more than you think, like here, here, and here. If possible, use watertight storage containers just in case, but even more useful and cheaper, get your storage off the floor. 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 Flooding, whether it's weather related or a pipe breaking or whatever, is usually an instant fatality to your collection. But if you move things up beyond ground level just a little bit, in case something ever happens, you're going to be very happy. So if you're storing in a basement and especially in a public storage situation, get the storage off the floor. If you're on the second floor, you're pretty much okay. And if you're all the way up in the attic, remember, armpit. Now, what about fire? Now, fire's bad for obvious reasons. And I know what you're thinking. That probably would never, ever happen to me. And I hope it doesn't. But that's exactly what everybody who's had it happen to has once said of themselves. One of our very own community members, Alexander from Phenomenal by Choice, lost everything in a fire not too long ago. Two days ago, my house caught fire and I lost, I lost everything. We got together, helped him out, sent him a new camera and some stuff so he could start creating again. So definitely check him out when you get a chance because he's back and he's creating content on his channel once again, thankfully. Now there are fireproof safes, but not all fireproof safes are created equal. And some of them actually, even though they protect you from fire, could actually damage your cards too. We're gonna talk more about this later, but I do need to call somebody for some help for this particular experiment. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it and check out one of our other videos right here, or maybe even this one.